This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On one software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Talk. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to another absolutely live episode of The Grid, broadcasting live from our headquarters, high above Tampa, Florida. And by high above, I mean like two feet above the pavement. Hey, yeah, I was going to say. We're, <laughs> I know. Oh. It just sounds so much better. Well, we almost were high above with the flooding. We are. Hey, uh, Scott Kelby here with my guest host. No, my co-host. Co-host. Not co-host. It's guest host. A man who shines brighter than a thousand burning suns. Really? Matt Klazowski. How do you know? Well, no one really knows what a thousand you can't look like. <laughs> we can only imagine. That That'd be it's pretty you. bright. I know, it's crazy. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Well, we Good got a to, big uh, show. Yeah, yeah. Blind critiques. These are, these are some of our favorites. So, so uh, yeah, Matt and I act as blind judges today. We look at your photos, and our, our job is, as Brad says, is to rip apart. The hopes and dreams, photographers everywhere. So we're glad you're along for that. Hey, a uh, couple things. First, first, I'm pimping a new shirt today. Check it out. Shoot Tokyo. Hmm. Right? They got a very cool, it's a cool blog. It's based in Japan and they, well, based in Tokyo. And uh, <laughs> Brad's writing very mean things on the screen. Anyway, um, so uh, I, I always have the Shoot Tokyo shirt that I bought from them a, a years ago. I've worn them in a m- bunch of videos. I love this shirt. And so they sent me this one this week. So Shoot Tokyo, go to their, their blog, shoottokyo.com. Very cool. And they sell gear and stuff. And there's always shots of things going on in Tokyo. Tokyo. What's going on in Tokyo today? Go to Shoot Tokyo. Hey, um, first I want to thank all the people that came out last week to my seminar. I was in Detroit uh, on Wednesday and Dallas on Friday. And I taught over 1,000 people, almost 1,100 people in just two days. Sweet. And so it was very, very fun. But I got that's not the big news. I mean, I guess it's semi-big news. But I'm going to show you this in a moment on my computer, but not just this second. But so but I had an extra day open in. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm new at this whole computer thing. So, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in. I want to hit that button right there. OK, so I was in uh, Dallas and, and Brad and I would be in Dallas a day before my seminar because we left Detroit and flew there. And so I put a tweet out and I said, hey, does anybody um, have a contact with the Dallas Cowboys? Because I always wanted to see the inside their stadium. I wanted to shoot inside their stadium. And I asked, I said, I'd like to shoot a fisheye inside the stadium. Well, 15 minutes later, I get a contact from a guy who's following me on Twitter. He is the social Shannon Gross. He's the social media guy for uh, the, the Cowboys, and he gave me access to the stadium uh, on Thursday, run of the middle, pl- run of the place, but you know it was bad? So uh, he sends me back a note and says, you know, we haven't had anybody shoot the stadium really since we switched over, so AT- it's now AT&T Stadium. So AT&T, you know, bought the branding and put their logos in, and he's like, this is great, we need the photos. I'm like, great, I need the photos, you need the photos. I wake up that morning, I'm sitting there in the lobby writing an article, and I think, you know, because they, the, they have the largest indoor screen yeah. of anything in the world. I thought, you know what's going to be on that screen? Nothing. Nothing. So I sent him an email. I need two things. Can you get the Cowboys logo up on the screen? And, of course, it's not game day. It's not like the the video guys are there. And can you also get me a helmet? I need a helmet. I don't need a player's helmet, but I need some kind of helmet. Anyway, he met me at the door a couple hours later with both both taken care of. Apparently, it was hard getting the logo. I brought some shots for you to see real quick if you want to just switch over to my computer. So here's uh, one of the end zones. And what an amazing structure. Just unbelievable it's like architecture. It's a big spaceship. So this is shot with a 14 to 18. What was it, Brad? No, 14 to 16. Uh-huh. Fish eye. What was the fish eye we shot? 8 to 15. What? 8 to 15. Eight, an 8 to 15. Oh, I have a, one of the 8s in here. 8 to 15 Canon fish eye. And here's, look at this, what the fish eye does. This is up, way up in the corner. But then I shot it with just a wide angle. So this is a, a 24 millimeter, I think. Look at the difference between the fish 
and the wide angle. Fishy. Yeah, fishy. And there's another just straight up wide angle shot. Look at the scale of that place. Yeah, okay, it's huge. And look at that. Look at this. Look at the look at the video screen. It's 60 yards long. <laughs> 60 yards. Wow. Now they run tours through there, so we would kind of have to wait for the tour to leave the field, and then Brad would go go, and we'd we'd take some of the shots. Here's the here's what I wanted to do with the helmet was just put a helmet on the field, and and uh, <clears throat> this is the eight. So, so it's 8 to 15 zoom. I laid it on center field and shot straight up, and that's, that's what you get. <laughs> you know what's funny is you have to set it on self-timer and then run. Because you'll be in the shot. Yeah, I am in the shot, actually. If you look right over there, it's me and Brad. Right there. <laughs> so, yeah, and that's running. We, like, ran off. This is unbelievable. So th when the team takes the field, they actually run through, the, the, like, the luxury club. The club where they hang out. Like oh yeah. They, they actually come through here and go straight out to the oh, field. Oh, that's cool. It is cool for the fans. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the team's right there. You know, because they don't just run through. They stop and they go. You know, on offense. <laughs> Hand me yeah. a drink. Anyway, I think this is back to the beginning. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, I just want to show you some of those shots. That's that's. Uh, All right. So you're going right. to be in. Uh, you're going to be in D.C. October 25th. Right. I get a month off. So I, a month from today, I will be in Washington D.C. with with the tour with the Shoot Like a Pro tour, and you're in Portland on the 11th. Portland, Oregon, October 11th. Yeah. And you're doing your Lightroom tour. Yes. So go to so. Kelby Training Live. You can check those out at uh, or KelbyTraining.com and click on Live. Oh, there it is, right there. Go to KelbyTraining.com/live, and there's there's all the cities. Look at that. We're going to Des Plains. It can't be called Des Plains. Des Plains? Des Plains. Couldn't be Des Plains. Plains. Anyway. Sorry. Anyway, we're in a bunch of different places. Uh, I'm in Boston after D.C., so I hope, you, hope to see you in one of those last few cities for the year. Um, also, uh, you know, we're broadcasting free classes all the time now, mm -hmm. right? 24 hours a day. We have live broadcast. I mean, a uh, continuous broadcast. And so right now we are uh, broadcasting Tim Wallace's Learn Automotive Photography in a Flash class. An amazing class. It's, it's, it's where, I, where I learned all my stuff from, it's from Tim. He's an amazing instructor. So they're broadcasting 24 hours a day. Go and, and watch them. And, yep. of course, what we're hoping you'll do is you'll watch one and you'll go, holy cow, this stuff is great. And, you know. And hopefully subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll, just, of, you'll decide you want to watch classes like that. Subscribe. So yeah. you want more classes like that. You want to like watch that. classes like that we all day long. Go. This is great. This is one class. I could be watching like 400 just like this. Of course, they wouldn't all be on automotive photography, but you get the idea. Hey, a couple of Adobe things. Uh, first one, um, my blog post yesterday. So I wrote a bunch of uh, stuff about uh, Adobe yesterday on the blog. And um, there it is, Tuesday Photoshop stuff. Great interview with Thomas Knoll, the guy who wrote Photoshop and still is an Adobe employee. Uh, I talked about the Photoshop photography program. So yesterday, a bunch of people uh, posted comments because uh, while a ton of people are thrilled with the $9.95% $9 9 .95 deal, which is Photoshop, it's a subscription to Photoshop and Lightroom, mm -hmm. the full latest versions, $9.99 a month. But it, it was for a Forever. Verse, forever. It was a very specific, that's, a, that's our word for it, it's not Adobe's word, Yeah. but it's for the foreseeable future. Um, but that was, Adobe made this deal for a very specific customer. It was for people who had all the way back to CS3. So if you were a Photoshop user, you'd bought CS3, CS4, CS5, CS6, whatever, one of those, that it was just for you. So the now the angry people are uh, the people that have bought the creative suite, like they have the full creative suite, it's not for them. And I sympathize with you. Or education, people that bought the education version of Photoshop. I sympathize with you. And people who are brand new users, they never bought anything. I don't sympathize with you. Yeah. <laughs> so here's why. So if you're if you're a brand new user, you want to pay basically 10 bucks a month for a $700 piece of software and a $150 piece of software. So you want to use professional level software for 10 bucks and you think that Adobe owes this to you and you've never ever been their customer. That deal is for their customers. It's for their existing customers. And it, I, you know, while I can sympathize with the, the, yeah, I bought the creative suite, I should be able to do it. I, I, I can, I sympathize with those folks and I sympathize with the, the education folks. If, if you've never been in a, a, a Adobe customer, you shouldn't have a super deal. There's a deal for you. It's 20 bucks. Go get Photoshop, and it's, it's 20 bucks. However, I just want to mention something else. For those two groups that I do sympathize with, mm -hmm. the Creative Suite users and all, this is what I've learned about Adobe. They're not fast. 
takes a little time. It takes a little time. It took Adobe from the announcement of the subscription only to this photographer's deal. It took them a long time. Now, they're, they're looking at everything. Adobe's really plugged into the community. They are really, really, really listening. They're listening at a level I've never seen Adobe do. But because they are one of the largest software companies in the world, that they don't do anything really fast. They're analyzing. They don't want to make a move and then say, oh, that was wrong and make another move. Just give them some time. I know they're looking at everything. I don't, I, Adobe hasn't told me they're doing anything for those two groups, but I, I think that Adobe's listening. I think they'll do something. This is me talking, not an official Adobe thing, but I think that they'll do something. I think at some point Adobe will go, well, here's the deal we're going to do for these people, and here's the deal we're going to do for these people. But I think that they will do a deal, and that at the, at, eventually, it may be 2022, but everyone will be happy at some point. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to, I, a lot of people wrote in that stuff, and I didn't want to write it all, you know, I didn't want to write some big, long thing. Oh, the second thing was, there was one more thing. A guy writes in and goes, I don't understand why it's more expensive for me in the UK, or no, in Europe. In Europe. in Europe. Why is it more expensive for me in Europe to get this deal? I called you about this. Yeah, you did. Because <laughs> I so, loved your response. Right, because I, I think it's $9.99 nine $9 euros, euros over there versus $9.99 here, 99, 99 cents. cents here. And so it's, it's approximately like 65% more over there. So the guy was really going on and on and on. And I said, you know what? That, that's very interesting <laughs> because I was thinking the same thing. Because when I go to Europe, everything over there is two to, two to three times more expensive for me. My hotel room, my rental car. You can't believe what you pay for a rental car in Europe. My food. A bottle and of water. A bottle of water. When I do a seminar over there and I have to rent a screen, the exact same screen from the exact same manufacturer that we buy here, let's say that the screen rental in, in New Jersey here is $400. It's at least 1,200 to 1,500 in Europe. The same exact sc same, same screen. Same one. Exact same one. If I rent a Shure SM58 microphone, it is four to five times as much in Europe than it is here. So I wonder the exact same thing. <laughs> Why is everything so more, much more expensive in Europe? This when person I, didn't answer you, did he? No. Well, he, he actually, he finally did write something, but he didn't really talk about what I was talking about. He went on to a different subject. Ah, okay. But um, that's the thing is I would love to have that question. Why is everything so expensive in Europe? Okay. Hey, we got lots of good giveaways. We're giving away a full year of Kelby Training Online. Full year subscription. Watch all the classes you want for one person. We have, oh, my new book. So we just did a refresh, there it is, Matt's holding it, of my volume two. So I had done a volume one earlier this year. This is a refresh. It's not a rewrite, but there's some new content. We, I just went through every page and saw, does anything need to be changed, updated, refreshed, new photos? It's, it's a refresh. It's not a complete rewrite. We're also giving away a fantastic book that I read this week. This I read it almost twice now. Peter Reed Miller on sports photography. If you are a sports photographer, this book is, it is hands down the best sports photography book I've ever read, period. I read the, the first few chapters are on football, and I had to go back and make notes on his stuff. Dude, I'm trying stuff this weekend at the Bucks arizona game straight out of that book. Then we're giving away a copy of Jeff Shiwi's book, The Digital Print. It is really, uh, it's about preparing images in Lightroom and Photoshop for printing. So if you print, this book is for you, The Digital Print by Jeff Shiwi, our friend, our very, very dear friend. He's I dear and very. He's especially very. Hey, um, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we are doing our blind photo critiques. Matt? We will crush people's dreams. And their hopes. All in just one minute. Don't go away. This class isn't just a what's in my bag, but it's also a why it's in my bag. Every piece of gear has to have a purpose. It's about the photography, and it's not about the equipment. We brought four local photographers into the studio, bounce questions and answers off of, and talk about the gear and what it would mean to them in their life. You need a camera, you need a lens, and some light. I'm Zach Arias, and check out this class on kelbytraining.com. Hey, we are back. Scott Kelby here with Matt Kluskowski. Matt, who is this segment brought to you by? What, what? 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. They are. This segment is brought to you by Peach Pit. So uh, we have our weekly uh, Peach Pit ebook deal of the week. Um, and this is for the actual, maybe that's why we're supposed to hold the book up. <laughs> it's 40% off of the ebook version of this. So the e digital print by Jeff Shiwi. And 40% uh, off you get it for $23.99, kelbytv.com slash peachpit. And uh, use the code kelbytv. There we go. All right. All right. Hey, I just also want to mention, we are 10 days away from my Worldwide Photo Walk. If you want to come and join us, it's free. October 5th in a city near you. Go to WorldwidePhotoWalk.com. Look, 1172 walks all over the world. From China Still, to lots Chinatown. of room for walkers too, right? If you yeah. want to join in, if you want to join, yeah. And wait, well, there are some walks that are sold out, of course. Go to find a walk, and uh, there you go. WorldwidePhotoWalk.com. Hope to see you there in about ten days. Okay. All right. It's time blind to... critiques. All right. Our blind critique show is about this. People send us their images. We don't mention their names unless you put, put a watermark, watermark on them. Then you're mentioning your own name. So um, we ask you to send three to five images. And, and we're going to give you a, a, an honest critique. And here's the thing. The reason why we give you an honest critique is really who's going to. Do you think your wife is going to look at you and go, honey, you're just not very good at this. <laughs> you, you think your husband's going to go, sweetie, it's time to sell your gear. And so your mom, your brother, yeah, your, your mom, sister, your brother, your yeah. friends, no one's going to tell you what they really think about your photography. And if you really want, if you just want a hug, just go to Flickr because that's where you go to get a hug. Put your, put your shots there. They'll tell you you're gifted, you're amazing, you're unbelievable, you should go on a museum tour. Um, but we just tell you straight up like it is. We don't know who you are. We're not trying to, to hurt you. We're just trying to be honest. And that's not very good for our first photographer. <laughs> let's, let's take a look. We'll just flip through them real quick, and then we'll, uh, we'll go back and, and see. So here's our first shot. Here's our second shot. Here's our third shot. Here's our fourth shot. So I, I will, I'm going to go back one shot and start here. This entire photo is blurry. There is nothing in this photo in focus. Nothing. Zero. The, the closest thing to kind of focus is the word Dunlop on his shoulder. On his shoulder there. But it's, it's, it's blurry. It's just it's the least blurry thing in here. When you, A successful panning shot like this actually needs... Now, if you're looking on a very small screen, like if you're watching this on your phone, you're thinking, it looks... It looks fairly uh, sharp. It's not. It, it's, it's, yeah, you can't. You can't. Yeah, once you, once you blow it up on full screen size on a yeah, laptop, you it's can super see it. blurry. I mean, it's like you could never turn this in for any kind of professional work. It's just a blurry shot. It's blurry all over. It's bad. I don't even know what to say, but don't ever show anyone this shot because the entire shot is blurry. All right. Let's go back to the first one here. Two, two big, big things. One, Scott is running his mouse along the edges of of the, the white, fire truck here. The white glow. You see those white halos? So that is the telltale sign of over processing. So what whatever you did, you did HDR, you did topaz, you did tonal contrast, whatever it was, you did way too much of it because now uh, now you have halos going all over the image. Um, the other thing I would say is, it it's it's really hard to take a picture like that because they, they can make good for good detailed HDR type photos when you take a when you take a fire truck like that or an automobile with lots of detail but the key to any good shot that I've seen like that is usually taken early in the morning or late in the evening you know closer to sunrise or sunset or on an overcast day yeah because it's really really hard to make a photo like that work on a bright sunny day um, it's just it, it, all those it's bright, harsh. bright highlights that you see that are harsh all over the place. It's just it's really hard to make it work, and it looks harsh. Yeah, it's not very flattering. You're you're starting off with a very unflattering picture of a tr of a, unflattering light on not a beautiful vehicle, and then you're throwing a ton of HDR of on the top processing of it. on a trip. How try is to make it going to get so. better? How would it yeah. So I have seen photos like that that work. Like I said, he yeah. this person has probably seen a fire truck photo somewhere. Like right. like, wow, but. That's not it. It was probably taken closer to sunrise yeah. or sunset, and uh, and just not so overprocessed. Same thing, overprocessing. Overprocessed to death. This is out of focus. This I like. I think this is a really cool shot. What happens if you crop it from like the top right down a little bit? Oh, you mean get rid of the junk over here? Yeah, like to take it all the way down to that air conditioning unit or whatever. Oh, right there. Just uh, no, nah, yeah, yeah. Crop it more. Take the top right one. 
down, 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 down. Keep more, going. More, more, more. Right there. Right there? Right there. Oh, that's better. There you go. You're right. That's a lot better. I, I kind of would want to, I would almost have to get rid of this little nose here. Yeah. You can, can we do a that? little bit more. But I, I kind of like that up there. This is, this could be a good shot. I'm done. There we go. That's a good shot. I really like, that's yeah. an interesting shot. I like it. Now, you know what's interesting about this photo? He didn't overprocess it. All the others are, well, two of them are, are way overprocessed. One's way out of focus. This one's sharp, well, fairly sharp. It's kind of blurry. But this one's it's fairly okay. sharp. Yeah. You know what's interesting about it, though? When you shoot something like this, so what's, what's in focus, sadly, is the railing, but the cars are not super Just in focus. Slightly, yeah. Like but this. I like it. I like the patterns. Yeah, I, this, I like the I patterns really like the car. That. So overall, uh, just a little bit better composition, but just be choosier about your subjects. And, and also, focus counts a lot. And, and you'll notice in that car shot we just looked at, yeah. not high noon. Hey, let's get to 100% so they can see a little better. Yeah, that's 100%. It's, that's, that's a, whoops, that's a blurry, okay. blurry mess. Move on. All right. Okay, next. Next one. Let's see, we'll go through all five. One, two, three, four, five. You know what I would say? This is not a bad photographer, mm -mm. but you know what it is? These are five very uninspiring shots. It's a flower, it's a hill, bad light, kind of footprints, eh. just. They're just very uninspiring. Now, you should, this is, looks like Monument Valley or something that looks like a, but it could be somewhere, anywhere out in the West. So in this, so one thing I would say, too much foreground in this one. Yeah, that's. It looks like a butt crack. But yeah, butt crack, <laughs> butt crack. Crop out some of the butt crack. Ooh, that's an awful looking butt crack, too. Crop it out a little bit. Um. <laughs> there's, there's, I'm trying there's to make a, something There's out. a rock in the middle. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm trying to save this thing here. You know what? I would just clone it out. I, I'm not even. You know, well, that's not so bad right yeah. there. That's not so bad. But black, so I, I like that photo. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the black and white for it, but um, yeah. But you know what? You know what? Overall, they're, they're just got foreground. You know, it's, it's not. This was not about the photographer's skill. This is about you've really chosen some very. There's no chance of someone looking at this just kind of out of focus flower and going, "Wow." Wow. You know what I mean? There's no wow to these. What's, there's no chance of wow. Yeah. It's just kind of like, eh, it's a shot. Wow, it was harsh that day. <laughs> wow, the light was harsh. Th there's just nothing there that's going to make you go wow. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it's not like you need to learn a bunch about photography. It's you need to understand how important what, what you're shooting is. Yeah, get into some better play. Go, go, can you go to that, sec that third black and white really quick? Like something like that. You're in a really cool place. Um, at a really ugly time. At a, at a bad time of day. And so that would automatically make it better. And then if you found something like in the foreground or something like that, that, that might make that a better photo. Because you are in a cool place. So just a better time of day would help. All right. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four. First impression is she looks pissed off in every, every single photo. photo. Exactly. Not that that one's a little perturbed, but the These rest are of them like, are. are you done yet? Is this done? Can we go? All right. Is this photo over? Can I, when can I get on my cell phone? Now this one's just you, you ever looking so far. It's all whites of her eyes. That's way too much whites. I don't see any any irises. Virtually no iris. That's yeah. just that. That is the technical thing wrong with this. But you know what the other thing is, it's five shots of the same subject, which makes me think you've shot one subject. She's got a non-flattering piece of light coming in here. Yeah. So you know, and let's let's give them the for this just for the sake of argument. Let's just say that they 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 want an overall evaluation on this photo shoot. So that was a good what you just said. The sun coming in. You got to look for stuff like that. Same thing here. Dappled light on her yeah. arm, on her arm here. Uh, an unhappy face. 
It's not flattering. You know what it is? None of the lighting is flattering to her. You're kind of shooting in the middle of the day. Look at this the coming across her harsh, head here. Harsh, harsh light. Harsh, harsh light. There. And and so if you want to flatter your subject, which I think that you do, right? You want your subject to look their very best. Shooting them at one o'clock in the day is the meanest thing you could possibly do to them. Yeah, I mean, if you Same look at the, here, look at those shadows, light. look at those shadows on the bridge. I mean, the sun is directly overhead. Yeah, it's like right over there. And so I, I think the main thing you could do, but like you could say, look, leading lines. There's there's some good photographic things happening in the worst possible light ever. Mm -hmm. So I, I think really take the same subject, tell her don't look mean in every shot or unhappy. She looks like unhappy, you know, it's like Rob per Finer, perturbed. Rob, Rob Finer says that's the same look my wife gives me when I try to photograph her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Albatross, that's the same look Rob's wife gives me when I try to photograph her. Uh, some good comments. All right, that's <laughs> not, not bad photography, just really bad light. Well, really bad light. and. I mean, this person stumbled on what the hardest part is. The hardest part's not the camera. Yeah. It's it's getting the model, getting the person in front of the camera to do what you want them to do. I yeah. mean, that's that's one of the hardest parts. This light's not terrible, but it's not it's not, it's not great. Yeah, later in Other the day. Other than the eyes, that's my favorite shot of the that of is the group. except for the eyes. That's far and away the favorite shot. All, All right, right, not bad. All right, one, two. Three, four, five. Matt? That's kind of, yeah. I like this I because of the, the, the moment. Yeah. The post-processing is a little, little hot. It's a little bit hot in the, the saturation. Yeah. You could probably use a vignette, a little bit more of a... Yeah, and it's got uh, some tonal stuff on it. You know what? Tonal stuff looks bad. Look over here on yeah. stuff that's out of focus. If you have an out of focus background, the, the tonal stuff looks funky. Like... If you, yeah, it could be, you, cause you're taking what was good about the photo. Like you shot the photo at a shallower depth of field mm -hmm. and you're taking that good stuff about the photo and then you're taking it away. Yep. That is a park at noonish. At noonish with big power lines. HDR clouds. Glows. Glow around the clouds, glow around the trees. Yeah, this is. You know what it is? The post-processing is very bad. It's got glows and all the typical mistakes all over it. But what makes this a wow picture? Nothing. It's not the post-processing that killed this, though it, it plenty killed it. But it's just, it's a park in your town. It's a, it's a park in anybody's town with dead grass and, in the foreground. And power line. Dead grass, harsh light, power lines here, telephone poles there. I don't want to say why would you take this, but. Span shot with your cell phone. I can't tell what's. Fireman overprocessed. Boy, it's overprocessing day here on the grid, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome so to overprocessing day. Now, I can tell you, I can tell you this much, the fireman shot. If you took the shot. For those, fire, like if you gave the, those firemen that shot, they probably loved it. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, this is awesome. That's probably the coolest shot that they've ever had of them in their gear. Dude, so. look, look at how bad it looks, though, on the out of focus stuff. That pr tonal processing. So, what you could do with tonal processing look is. Look at his knee. You could tell. You could tell it was. The, you even tried to do some masking in there because his knee is. Yeah, because there's. And look between them. You could see it's right there. But why, why not just do them, right? And then the backgrounds out of focus, leave those guys as is. Leave them untouched and just put the tonal stuff on these guys. And crop in a little tighter. Yeah, and crop in a little tighter because this, is, this isn't this is helping you. And the headless horsemen aren't helping you either. Nope. <laughs> the headless horsemen. Oh. So, John what, Zander. Sleepy Hollow? So, John Zander. Watermark your photos. It's this. Is it, it's also shoot with sun directly overhead day. Yeah. What is with Look that? Look at the shadow. I mean, the shadow is is literally. Yeah. I like her pose and her smile. You know what make that so 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 two simple things because you got you you see you got a cool. I think you have a cool subject here. Um, pull that subject away from the. the you know, Look shade right there. Look. Yeah. That that or or just shoot a little bit shoot a little bit earlier a little bit later. But here here's a, so we see this all the time. When what do people do? They 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 find a tree, and you put somebody 
in front of that tree. You find a cool tree, you find a cool thing, and you put somebody right in front of it. One of the secrets is you actually put them 10 or 15 feet in front of it. Right. And you shoot at a shallow depth on the edge of the shade. Yep. You shoot at a shallow depth of field. And then what that does is you can still see all the color and all the coolness of the tree behind them, but it's out of focus. It's not going to take over the photo like this one does here. So it's just mostly a post processing thing and light. It's post processing and light. This one doesn't have bad light, but this post processing, it's over post processing day. Maybe we'll find somebody. Well, this looks good. This has promise. Ooh, I like, Ooh, I like that shot. Ooh, I like that shot I a like lot. I like the sun, the little okay. flare in the so corner. So big difference here between that motorcycle shot. This has got a big section of the car that's in focus. That's important. And it's the important part of the car that's in focus right here. This, your eyes drawn to the sharpest thing in the photo. This is a, this is a tremendously better panning shot than the one we saw earlier because part's in focus. This one could probably use to panning is that the wheels are frozen, but still it's not too, too bad. But ideally you would have these wheels moving a little bit. Yeah, pan, yeah, that one. This is a panning shot. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is in focus. This is pretty good. I might throw a vignette on there. Yeah, maybe. A little vignette, but yeah. So would you like to see a vignette on there, man? I would, I would, I would. that'd be nice. Oh yeah. A little midpoint, a little midpoint action. There we yeah. go. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I like that better. And lastly, it's you know it's what a, it is. It's as good of a high. I mean, it's a I know, but good high jump look at, shot. Look at her expression here. If she I can't was, see it. if she was asleep on the couch. Oh, look, I can't. You can't. I can't see that. It looks like her eyes are closed up on the screen. Yeah, no. It just looks like she looks bored. Like, oh, I'll just jump over this thing. I mean, if she, if you didn't see, if I just showed a picture of her head just right here, you'd think, what is she doing? She's contemplating. She's thinking. And I got a tip. I got a tip for. Her. And, and this person might not have been able to use this tip, and I'm going to guess that yeah. they couldn't. Um, if you're, if you were setting the shot up. Like if you're doing portraits for this person, mm -hmm. um, the the one thing that I, that you always have to do is you have to have them yell, do something in the middle of As what they're, they're going to do, over. Yeah. Um, because that happens a lot. I mean, you, you've shot people like that. I've yeah. shot I've shot runners. I've shot runners that are doing something, but because they're not really doing it hard, they're just like. So you have to have them yell. You have to have them grimace. You have to do something. Yeah. If Emotion. you're shooting, if you're shooting the sports event, you don't have a choice. You, all you can do is just yeah. hope that they grimaced or there's emotion. And if they didn't, then you're stuck with whatever shot you have. But uh, that's good. Really good. Not bad. Good. Okay. But not bad overall. Hey, it's time for a break. When we come back, more, more fun. On the grid. On the grid. Here at Calby Training, we have hundreds of classes and thousands of lessons on all kinds of photography techniques, from beginners to advanced. But if you're just starting out, maybe unboxing your first DSLR, you may not have a clue where to begin. What if you had an opportunity to learn from world-class photography instructors exactly what you need to get started? From the very beginning, with help all along the way, Calby Training now can give you just that. We're launching an innovative new tool for beginners called Beginner Start Here. It'll lay the foundation needed to understand your camera and walk you through how to capture beautiful images. And the best part is, all you have to do is tell us a little about yourself, such as your camera manufacturer, your DSLR model, and what you're interested in. And we'll design a custom curriculum to help you take your photography to the next level. It's the perfect way to learn at your own pace, on your own time. Plus, with a subscription, you get access to our online training wherever you are, so you can replay specific clips or even repeat the entire class if you'd like. We'll take you step by step right through the process so you can start taking good images in no time. And as you grow, we have a huge library of classes on all different kinds of photography techniques that can help you take your photography beyond the basics. So if you're just starting out and itching to turn that mode dial to something other than auto, then this is for you. And we're passionate about teaching you how every step of the way. Start here at kelbytraining.com.
Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Matt Kleskowski. And uh, hey, Richard uh, Dukeshire, or Dukeshire, uh, wrote in, what are the most Duke common... Kes her. Kes her. <laughs> what are the most common mistakes Scott and Matt run across in portfolios? Uh, I would think that uh, they are... We've uh, seen a, a ton so we've far We've seen a today. ton of them so far. Shooting in just harsh light. It's just, it, it's... Harsh light is unflattering to people. We saw how unflattering it is to a fire truck. It's unflattering to landscapes. It's like, it's, you know, light is such an important part of photography. It's not the only part, but it's certainly an important part, and it, it looks really bad. So I would say harsh light. Another one is just uninspiring. You're shooting something very uninspiring. You're not shooting a fabulous waterfall. You're shooting a eh, waterfall. You're not Whether shooting, it's a person, place, or thing. Right. Whatever it is, you're just shooting something that's just kind of doesn't have a whole lot of chance of being really exciting. Uh, the, uh, also, junk on the edges. People yeah. don't look at the edges of their image, and there's all kinds of junk. Matt? I, I was going to say, um, and, and so, so many of the, the things we just mentioned have nothing to do with, with in camera. But Yeah, those, none of those are camera settings. Posing and, and emotion. Yeah, from emotion the, from, from the people. From yep. the people. The, the people shots that we see tend not, I mean, there, there are lighting problems in some of them, but... There, there's just no emotion, there's no connection, there's no posing, there, there's none of that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just like we saw, you know, ticked off girl before. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's take a look. Next. So uh, we have a little uh, streamy kind of thing here. Matt? Well, they, I mean, the, the, the water's not frozen, so it's not a total loss. Yeah, you, do, you did good on the, the silky waterfall thing. I mean, I'd probably crop in a little bit tighter. So say when. You want less what? Less yeah, yeah, of that, keep, right? Yeah, keep going, keep going. And you could probably use a little oh, less of this yeah. big rock. Oh, yeah. There we go. Pull it down a little bit. Down, down, down. Yeah, right around there. That's better. So that helps. That's got a lot more. Uh, um, the water is kind of blue. I don't know if it's just the screen I'm looking at, but. So, something like that. Little vignette, Matt? Oh, it's. Everything gets a vignette. There's nothing that doesn't get a vignette, really, unless it's shot on a white background. You know what? A vignette is like grated cheese. <laughs> there are very few dishes it doesn't make better. Cereal, for example. Oh my gosh, you ever yeah. put grated cheese on cereal? Not today. Chocolate, grated cheese. Mmm, it's so good. Not today. All right. Okay. Hey, do you know? Can I, can I just stop for one second? Don't move. Don't touch the screen. Don't touch the screen. Look at our new feature. Picture P -I -P? in picture. PIP, baby. PIP. We're yeah, down you with PIP. <laughs> All right, sorry. What, okay. What? 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 Okay. So um, we went out to feed the horse, took a bucket, and our dog is in a very uncomfortable looking position, and we took a shot of it. It's not a bad shot because the light's kind of pretty, especially on the horse. I call this horse eating with dog testicles nearby. Yep, dog testicles. Um, so here's, here's the thing. Like you, like you said, it, it's pretty light, pretty everything. The only person that you would give this shot to is the is the the person who owns the horse. Like it, th this yeah. is this is portfolio critiques. Why would you would never yeah, this ever been your ever put this this photo in your portfolio? Or you would at least remove the dog and maybe the person and maybe the bucket. <laughs> so it's portfolio. So it's like you said, it's it's a nice snapshot it's, to yeah. give to the person and say, hey, yeah. here's a picture you. And if your you're horse. if you're putting this in your photo album for our trip to Vermont, it'd be fine. Yeah. There's nothing in this photo that's in focus. Nothing. Not the okay with a wildlife photo, you got to have the eyes in focus, and the eyes are not in focus. You can, you, and again, you got to see it. Yeah, on you got to see it large. Screen. But I can tell you, there's nothing. There's no, there's yeah. no part of this photo that's in sharp focus. It's all a little blurry. And all the little blurry photos go straight in the trash. It's just, it's just not good. Albatross says never do that and again. You know never what? do what again? I think they were dog testicle. <laughs> what, what? Oh, the wrapping? <laughs> okay. Dude, we can wrap like mad. Um, I have a name for my rap. Wait, you, you know what my I rap name is? Do you know what my rap name is? Uh-uh. Plain White Rapper. <laughs> Come on. It's a good rap name. Plain White Rapper. I'm white. It's rapping. Okay, anyway. This horse shares the same thing as the monkey. Nothing's in focus on the horse. It's all a little out of focus. Yeah. And you really, I don't know, I don't know if you can see it on your screen. On our screen, it's very, very evident that it's not sharp. Which brings us down to an actually really, really, really good shot. Look at this shot. This is beautiful. Look at the light on the car. The light. Now, I will say this. 
of the people we've looked at today, these are, it's the best lighting. Every one of these shots does not is that's okay lighting. That's nice lighting. Mm -hmm. Nice lighting. Nice lighting. Beautiful lighting. Look, and because the sun is so low in the sky, look at how nice the lines on the mm -hmm. car are. I mean, it's a little dark up front and stuff, but there's there's a program that'll fix that. By the way, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, but uh, anyway, you can do something to bring out a little bit. Well, let's have, hold on here. Let's open up the shadows or something. Oh God, they're kind of the shadows are kind of harsh. Well, it might be because it's um, like it's we know, staged. Yeah, it's a JPEG that's been been brutalized. Um, you could do something with that with the raw file. That's a little ignore. Good that. location though. Good it's, location. Uh, the the wheels turned a bit too far. You you would want to see. The the I mean you want to nitpick it a little bit yeah the wheels turn well the wheel I think has turned definitely too far because you're not seeing the actual right. you're seeing all tire which is not pretty instead of the beautiful wheel that's on the Audi number two is just get a little lower but this is a great shot I love this shot this is look at the light on this car versus that fire truck mm -hmm. all right yep. so okay let's see what we got here oh that's a nice shot. Yep. Baby, that's a nice shot. That's a cute, cute. shot. Cute. It's gimmicky but cute. This is very nice. This is a good photographer, whoever you are. Good shout light. out. Good, good light. light. Good emotion. Cute couple. Crop it a little bit more, maybe. Crop, I don't. I like it. Yeah. It's now, if you're going to crop too much it, of the, you'd take out too much of the of the lens flare that makes it nice. If I was going to go, I would go this way. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. But yeah. you might take out too much of the. Oh, still okay. Yeah. So anyway, but That's nice. my favorite of the group. Oh, so far, this person's beating everybody else. Good Hands light. down. Good light. Cute baby. Baby. And uh, this is an interesting shot. This is a good shot. Yeah, very fine, Artie. Baby in the basket. Come on. Baby. And you know this what? This one's gimmicky, but it's cute. And you know the what? Mom I, probably I would lost venture to say, not, yeah. I mean, not complicated. It looks all natural light. So there's yeah. not, you know. I might put a, a few more of those flowers right in here. If only there was a program that would let you clone flowers in there. If only. If only. Anyway, but good. Yeah. Three nice, cheers to that photographer. Nice, like, good subjects. Good job. Good, good job. Okay, we're going to go through these. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Can I tell you something? I like it. I do too. You know what? It has a very strong graphic sense to it. There's lots of negative space. A negative space is just this emptiness over here, even though it's filled with clouds and still, it's still negative space. I almost like to see that one as a black and white. This one is a black and white? Is there a program that can do that? Whoops. I just went to a completely wrong checkbox. Not lens corrections. But if you're gonna make it black and white, you have to add contrast. Contrast, and then like the radio filter just down, yeah, there you go. Or a big vignette. You want a big vignette? A big, vi really? The, a vignette? the radio filter something, just down in the bottom corner. But just yeah. here? I kind of like it as a black and white. Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay with it I don't color like too. many things as a black and white. Yeah, Matt does not a black and white <laughs> fan. Like, I like this though. This is, I do, I, I, I do. And I, that's, that's really good. That's a lot of nothing and it's good. It's just something about it's it. It's the form and the shapes. It's the form and the shapes. I dig this photographer. I dig you. Look at two in a row, dude. Two in a row. Very good. Good job. Just form, shapes, atmosphere. Good job. Keep ground. doing what you're doing. Okay. All right. So let me just say this. We're going to have to take out the fact that they're really cute kids because all the kids are very adorable here. So we're not, we're just going to look at the photography. I, it's almost a little, I, it's a cute shot. It's almost a little too low. It needs some cropping. Lighting's good. It's almost a little too low. There. Like you, you, like you're behind the grass. It, like I, I know what shot they're going yeah. for, like down low with yeah. the grass, but you got, you got behind the grass. Did you almost. see how your, your picture in picture faded in? Like it, it went, it went like. You didn't just go pop. You could you could crop this one. Yeah, it, 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 it's angled. Yeah, th it's, this one's got. I I don't. You'd have to reshoot this. It's just a little too low. And you know what else? What's really prominent in this picture are the knees. Yeah. Like this. This is really overly prominent. A when vignette you really, could help that though. Well, it could a little bit. But good start to that. One. I mean, I I. I, I 
It's not going to help enough. Yeah. Right. That is a cute baby. I'm sorry, dude. That's just a cute baby. <laughs> cute baby. That's a cute setup. I think just the 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 name and everything. <laughs> William Beam says this is the alligator's perspective <laughs> of your child. Hey, so William Beam, can I show you something about William Beam? W Beam. Yeah. So look, my my startup picture on my phone is from William Beam. So it's it's a picture he shot of my wife uh, at the uh, concert pre-conference. Dude, you got another uh, guy taking pictures of your wife? Well, I was on stage too. I can't. I couldn't take the picture. It was a. They're supposed to take pictures. That was what they're doing. All right, hold on. Let me get it up again. Dude, I won't put up with that. There it is. Can you, can you get in on that? I'd have some words with him. That's William Beam. He took that picture. It's a cool picture. Every time I start my iPhone 5s. Dude, I'd fight him. <laughs> All right, here we go. You get a new iPhone? Yes, yeah, iPhone 5s. Yeah. I write books on these. I don't know if you know. I kind of have to get one. Yeah. Yeah. I never seen it. We give away one of my iPhone books or something. <laughs> Can we just to prove I do it? All right. This is a cute shot. It's just a cute shot. Yeah, yeah there's nothing. nothing you know that. what I might do on that one is uh, take like the graduated filter from the bottom right. Oh, because it's bright over there. Because it's bright. That's yeah. a good. That's a good. Just uh, like just, this. So we're gonna darken this a little, and then go up over from there, there like that. You go. There, you, there go. you go. There you go. There you go. That's the only thing I'd change. And I might just go get the adjustment brush. And just brighten him up just a little bit. Not that much, but that's okay. We'll go back and adjust it. It'd be nice if he was smiling, but, you know. Oh, dude, that kid's so cute, though. Cute. That's such a cute little, like, that's a T. All right, next up. She just needs to be further away from the background. Very cute girl. The lighting is flattering. She's too close to the background. She needs to be, like, four or five feet. Yep. I don't want to see this roll, and I don't want to see that shadow. Just get her... A few four more feet in front of the background, and there's something over here that should be cropped away. Cute girl, nice lighting, good emotion, all good, except for way too close to the background. I like that shot. Cute. Who's a good dog? <laughs> Who's a good doggy? Hey, if we're being, oh, never mind, I'm not even going to be picky on it. Don't be picky. And I like that shot. <clears throat> yeah. A little vin throw a vignette on it. It's, it's, the clouds are a little bit. Okay, little bit how about processed. a radial, I mean, uh, a uh, gradient up here instead? Is this the radial filter or the graduated filter? Graduated. The clouds are... They're too dark now. Hold on. The clouds are over HDR. They HDR yeah. them. Or tonal, tonal contrast them. Okay, not bad, though. Yeah, We're no, gonna nice stuff. Get, get some more from good, good stuff. We're giving you high fives there. Not bad. Are those crickets? Are they? They're grasshoppers? Or are they people hanging on for dear life? I don't know. We'll just roll with on. With antennas. This is not a good shot. There is nothing good happening in this shot. This is an animal running away, so it's an animal's butt. Animal's butt is not good. Just period. There's nothing really else to say. It's just an animal butt yeah. running away. I don't know what you're thinking there. It's too much grass. Alligator looking at a car? Kind of like that. For uh, if it was industrial, a, yeah. Like if, if your client was an industrial, whatever. Yeah, and if it was equipment. in focus, it'd even be better. It, it's not in real sharp focus. Oh, it's no. a little soft. Yeah, look, I'm looking up on the big screen. It looks okay. Well, of course, but, it's 20 feet away. Yeah, dude. I don't know about the. Uh, I don't know about the cricket photo. Yeah, I don't know about any of these. Um, it it's not bad photographic technique. It's not like I'm a bad photographer. The compositions are all pretty good, except for you. What what the hell is this? I, <laughs> Why is this here? Why did you send this in, really? Come on, tell us. Are we being, are we being pranked? Come on, are we being pranked? <laughs> okay, sorry. Ooh, I like this. Yep, silky water. Beautiful silky water. I like this. I like it. I would crop it's out the... a little the, bright over here, but... I'd, if I could, I'd crop out the top stuff. This stuff over here? Yep. Well, you can, Matt, actually. Really? We is have a program. Is there a program that can do that? There is. No. There we go. Oh, much and better. And what about this? This is, see, we're, we're talking about border junk? Yep. That is the hallmark of border junk. Dude, seriously. That's a much stronger picture. Seriously, it, it's an incredibly strong picture just, just from that. Little vignetting. Come on, work it. Look at the difference. That's a, the that's silky a much water, stronger picture. fall color. I mean, 
nothing distracting. It's it, whenever, okay, so here, if I, if I could give any, uh, somebody asked before, what are some of the common problems that we see? Um, landscape and outdoor photos is holes in the trees in the sky. They're so distracting because mm -hmm. it's white. It's, you know, no matter what you do, it looks white back there, and you gotta clone those things out because it takes away from the entire photo. Hey, so. If you look on screen, I'm actually, I, I went here and lowered the highlights, and I'm painting over some of the bright, distracting areas because yeah. you want them looking kind of like here, and so you don't really want them looking at those trees in the background. So look Great at the photo. difference. But good, this is good photographer. There, this stuff's good. Look at this. Oh, I like that. Look at this. I look at this. Look at these. Good, good, good. <laughs> I'd love uh -oh. to see that. I'd love to see that uh, yellow, uh -oh. the snowy one. I'd love to see it cropped so that yellow tree is off to one side. You know uh, what I'm saying? You know, I'm okay with it because it's 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 in the top third. Yeah, I'm okay no, with it. I, I know. I just all like right. it off. No, no, it's a, it's good though. But what happened here? Zion, or something? It, it, at two o'clock in the afternoon? I get it. I get it. I get it. You were at a workshop this day, workshop this day, workshop this day. Then you went on your own. Oh yeah, these are on your own. No, that's, I don't know, that's not. Dude, it's at five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> and look at this, it's ugly. This is ugly. This is an ugly shot. Ugly, ugly, ugly. You, you did good, you found a foreground object, you just didn't find a really good you foreground object. You found an object. ugly foreground object. I like that, I like the concept. You're trying to put something what in the happened? foreground. This was so promising. Look, you're, you're capable of making really good shots. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. What happened here and worse? What it got worse. You're Not three. to mention that those two last places aren't great places either. Mm -mm. But these are really good. And this is a hard shot to get good right here. This is a trickier shot than you think. My guess is this, this, and this were taken at a workshop. No, I just. I'm guessing. No. Just my guess. <laughs> These weren't. That was the day after the workshop I drove to <laughs> Zion. I'm not sure about that. That one, at least there's color in the sky, so there's gotta, hey, be, yeah, there's there's, gotta be something there. There's it's something. Just, but just, okay, can I say something? Look at my monitor. Don't look at that monitor. That monitor makes everything look good over there. It does, doesn't it? This is what it really looks like. Look <laughs> it over looks here. looks great up there. Yeah, look here. <laughs> yeah, it's a little. It's uh, bad. See, these are bad here. Look. Up there, it looks that everyone should look through the monitor we have in our studio, which we know is way off, because it looks so much better. Yeah, it, if every photo could be uh, could be shown on that. But look at the other ones. Look, these look good here on my monitor. Yeah. All right, we gotta take a break. We gotta take a break, and we come back. More, more love, more Bo. hugs, more hugs. Hey, and, more and we'll love. give an iPhone book. Hey, there's my iPhone book. Whee! When we come back. Peace. Whether you love to read ebooks on your iPad, consider your Kindle your best friend, or addicted to your Nook, Peach Pit ebooks are for you. When you purchase your ebooks from Peach Pit, you get three formats. That means you can easily read them on any device of your choice. Or if you're in the mood to read on your computer, we supply you with the PDF. Head on over to Peach Pit today to get an ebook for 40% off. Hey, Bill. So, Bill, uh, Bill asks, hey, Bill. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the screen hey, here. Hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. So, it's a one person show. This is brought to you by, actually, this segment is brought to you by Intel, makers of the chips that make your computer go crazy fast. Sorry. Bill. Okay. So, Bill writes in. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. It's a little sleepy. I couldn't hold it back. Dude, we just had a commercial. You I yawn know, on commercials. That's what I do. I take a nap they're sometimes. They're supposed to change cameras when I go to yawn. <sighs> no, you're supposed to yawn when you see they've changed cameras. That's why we have a monitor I, in the I studio. I couldn't help it. It just happens. Aye, aye, aye. 
Phil, Oof. why do I always retain the aspect ratio when I crop? Well, I, I don't think you were. No, I do. I always maintain do you? the. I always maintain the aspect ratio. Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons. Well, number one was because you know when I shoot for a wire service, one of their main rules was always maintain <laughs> your aspect ratio. So they want the stupid aspect ratio that the cameras shoot in. Right. Okay. Well, and that's but but you know what it is. We're used to seeing that aspect ratio, right? That's the aspect ratio that we all see, and so either I would make it square so it's obviously not the same thing. I don't know. I just I don't crop crop weird crops. I crop. You know, like you're just readjusting what you saw on the screen. Um, by the way, the guy, we, we, uh, we have a note here that the guy who, uh, uh, who took these shots that you see on screen here. The workshop photos? Uh, it says he's never been to a workshop. Yeah, and so what, right. I would, what, I would, no, what I would say to him is it's time for a workshop. Because you're close. <laughs> you're really close. But, and the reason, here's why, can I tell you, I want to explain myself here. The reason why I said he's been to a workshop is I, I've seen this time and time again when I do one-on-one -on -one portfolio critiques. And what I see is that... Um, the workshop forces you to get shots in good light. They make you get up early. They make you go to a really unique place. They, they kind of force you to do the right things, right? They force you to do it. What does it mean when you're waving your hand over the camera? Look at that camera. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm, so, I'm new to this. Um, so um, where was I? I don't know. Oh, oh wait. When, when you go to Talk a workshop, it, it makes you get up. But what happens is people have <laughs> these great shots when they go to a workshop, and then all of a sudden you see a shot like this, and you know, well, this wasn't with a workshop. I can tell you this wasn't with a workshop because the workshop would have made you get up early and go to a pretty location. This is an ugly location in bad light. That would never happen in a workshop. Neither would this. This was maybe an hour and a half before the really good light showed up. This one's starting to get to where a workshop which would, would show up. In other words, an hour and a half from now, you'll see workshops pulling up to that location in a bus. All right. So, uh, yes, yeah, Scott, someone wrote, but sometimes Mother Nature doesn't cooperate even when you do the all right things. Right. And, and you know what? Those, you don't those, show those photos. Those are the photos that don't go in your portfolio. Right. Those are exactly the photos. Dude, I got a million oh, shots. Bad. Dude, we've taken whole workshops out to incredible locations and not a cloud in the sky. And they're just awful. And or you know what? Rain or, yeah. I don't put those in my portfolio. I don't ask other people to judge them. There's plenty of times where you're, you're doing travel or landscape and Mother Nature absolutely does not cooperate. You just don't ever show those photos. Yeah. But you sent them to us as here's my best work. You got three. You could put them in a photo book from the trip. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, let me say this. Okay. Say it. Unnamed guy, whoever you are, if you had just shown just those first three shots, this conversation would be completely different. All we'd be talking about is that's the best photographer of the day. <laughs> but you didn't. You sent two crappy shots. So now I'm judging you on all of it, and now I think you're, you're right. I... Would have thought completely different of you if you'd only shown your best work. You show those first three. I'm thinking, Matt, this guy's, we're both thinking you're great. But then two crappy shots. And now I'm like, did he go to a workshop? Does he just get lucky sometimes? Now I have all these other thoughts in my head instead of you just being a great photographer. That's why on my tour, I give a whole speech about why you only show your best work. Those, these last two shots, they're not your best work. They're not, they shouldn't be shown. They're just, eh. Okay. Okay. Next one. Ooh, we got some compositing. Got some little composite tattoo. So uh, here's what I like. I like the fact that they're 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 nailing the color. Right. One of the things that really gives away a lot of composites is they don't match the color to the scene, mm -hmm. but this person is matching the color to the scene, right? Uh, this one, not so much. This one, not nearly as much. Uh, that one, the, it, you know, the color looks bright and punchy like it does in, in this uh, background. This one, the color looks gray and drab like it does because her skin isn't that color, mm -hmm. right? That's been desaturated to match this or whatever. And um, this one, not so much. His skin looks very brown and I mean, yeah, very brown and warm compared to the very cold gray His surroundings. His skin's got a very, yeah, warm and reddish look to it. Yeah. So I'm just going to show you real quick. I don't know if I can get Photoshop to open from here. So what I would think would be is you almost want a, this color, like this kind of tint. Reds? What if I, yeah, I could just desaturate the reds, couldn't I? It's luminous. Oh, it's luminous. Sorry. There you go. Yep. 
just by desaturating the reds, that looks I'm still too red on that screen, you're starting to get his skin to look more like, in fact, I think you might even want to punch up the blues just a, a tad. But of course, unfortunately, it punches it up on everything. What you, here's what you could do with the reds is just desaturate. Go to here and just say saturation and just take some out of his face. Not that mm -hmm. much. Not, but it actually his looks arm, okay up on the screen. Yeah, it's, I went too far in, in real life here. All right, and then we just took out too much. There you go. So now it looks like the lighting. But, that, but uh, otherwise, I think they did a pretty good job. So, Matt, you, I mean, you're a compositing expert. You wrote the book on compositing. So what are your thoughts? Um, I know I think I think he did good the lighting works for uh, for all of them uh, that one I would darken uh, that one and the one you just showed the other one I would darken the legs a little bit notice how bright how bright their legs are yeah I, I always I always bring the a vignette helps um, but just something to darken the legs and, and get some of the light off of there yeah especially over here right Th so this one this one's a little bit interesting because He's got this bright light all around him. But there's but the there's, yellow. There's yellow golden light. He's got this Ooh, bright white point. light that's all around him. And there's this yellow golden light on the mountain behind yellow him. Yellow golden mat. So that one's a. What if I could make the light a little more yellow? That's not a pretty yellow, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> You're right. He needs to be just more yellow all the way around for this scene. That helps. Yeah. I mean, it's not the, that's not the exact uh, probably yellow you want. Look how much better that looks, though. Mm -hmm. From the white to, I mean, I, I spilled over the sides here and did all kinds of horrible things. But, I mean, you, you have to work with that color a little bit. But you're right. He should be, that should be a sunset lit thing, and it's, it's not for sure. And then the only thing is, is, like, your composite lighting doesn't have to always match what's ambient around. Like, you can't say, okay, this light's coming from here, this light's coming from here. You don't always have to do that. Right. But at the same time, there's zero light around this person. There shouldn't be that light this side. This yeah. side doesn't need to be lit. That side where you have the setting sun, you could have that bright exactly, light. Exactly, exactly. Right. You, you should have shot this and with you know one what? light on the, he on knew. the right side. This guy knew that he was compositing under this background because look how he nailed the angle of the yeah. bike on the road. That part's really so, well done. It like, is. It I, is. Hey, I'm still going to give this this photographer you know, a high five. Big I, props. I still think. Um, See, lights behind him, so it's okay that it's on both right, sides. On both but sides. that last photo, yeah. lights behind him. Right. I don't know. Uh, you that might. One's you nice. might. Well, you might pick one side. Yeah. You don't always have to pick two sides. It depends on the on if you know where you're compiling. Good job, yeah. though. Overall, we're yeah, going to give you nice give you a little bit of love. One. Two. Three. Five. Overall, I like them. Yeah. I, um, I would say some of this stuff looks a little uncontrasty. Like they, now, uh, they, they could. Um... All no, right. All right. Yeah. So here, let, let's let's talk about this person's photos, and we'll take the question. All right. All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll stay here. All right, we got we got a question. All right. So this. Um, just overall, they're just nice. I like this picture a lot. You know what I like? I like the I like expressions and lot. emotions. I like this one a lot too. Laying baby. I, I mean, it's kind of uh, weird that it's laying baby. It's <laughs> no, but I think it's cute. Yeah. These are all, you know what I like? I like all the emotions and the expressions. I just like. This is the good. lighting's good on them. Like, yep. right, I mean, all of all them. All the lighting is good. All the babies are good. The baby, the bee is good. See, the I, sun's behind them. Everything. Yeah, this is all good. Good job. Yeah. Just, all right. Go ahead and say, uh, take the question, Matt. We'll right. get the next one ready. So, Mikkel says, uh, question for Scott and Matt. If compositing is done right, aren't you supposed to not be able to see that it is a composite? While these are, of course, pretty good, the very first thing you said was they were, in fact, composites. Right. Um, I, I have a comment. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so, Mikhail, uh, number one is this is a very obvious composite style, like a Joel Grimes composite. Yeah. We recognize it as a Joel Grimes style immediately. The people, everybody else looking at it would not know. Well, I don't think the public would go, oh, that's a composite. Because nope. we see composites every day. When you drive down the strip in Vegas, it's picture after picture of people in nightclubs. If you look at the lighting and go, oh, that's a composite. Oh, she wasn't wearing that that in the, at the party. That was, comp yep. you can see all the, all the, just even looking at the lighting, you can see the compositing. There's a ton of compositing, and the public doesn't really look at it like we look at it. Those were instantly obvious a and especially the the picture of the swimmer on this on the on the background from who makes the backgrounds 
Oh, street uh, streetscapes. streetscapes. Streetscapes background. We knew the background was the streetscapes as soon as we saw it. Uh, it's all of those just, they yeah. had that trademark composite look, not because the compositing was bad, but because no. we knew the style they were trying to, just like if you say, oh, that's a Jay Maisel style, yeah. or you're trying to make a Joe Maisel. Yeah. So it wasn't based on their that. Yeah. And, and you can add anything you want to that. No, I was, I was going to say the same exact thing. And, and Mikel is probably, I mean, he's, whether he, whether he knows it or not, um, if he knew to notice that they were composites, he's probably an expert in this field. Yeah. So he can he can recognize that. Yeah, we can say, oh, those are composites. Whoever yeah. they were done for doesn't know. Right. All right. Uh, we have uh, Dagger. Nice. Bird, nice. Yeah. Very kind of soft and nice. Oh. Nemo, nice. A little hot in the, in the face, but that's yeah, okay. It's a shame I, because that's I a like it. really cool. Gator, ugly, but nice. Nice. Good photography. All the way. I like every shot. Good light. Good light. Good posing. Good posing. <laughs> the way you pose that fish. And the gator. I really like the Nemo. Go back to the, let me see the Nemo shot on your computer because it looks really good up there. It's just, it's a little hot right there. Uh, let's just see if we can pull back those highlights on the nose. Yeah, a little bit. You, you know look what? at it up on the screen. Yeah, it looks good on the screen. It makes everything look good. What if I just <laughs> took the highlights just back in just this one area? Oh, it looks awful. Don't even look at that. That looks that totally just, natural. Yeah, that's awful, awful. Sorry. But cool anyway, photo. cool photo. Good job. I mean, just good high five. lighting all around. Good and, lighting, and good composition. Nice tight, nice tight. You know, cropping. the cropping oh, yeah. and the composition is nice and tight on all of them. The eyes are sharp in every single photo that you can see an eye. And uh, they brought, you know what it is with wildlife? When you bring wildlife in close, it makes it intimate. I, I can see. Uh, a fish from a far away. I can see a gator, you know, or my wife calls the Loch Ness gator. She believes that there's a gator in our in our in the lake behind our house, which there's not, by the way. Anyway, but she calls it the Loch Ness gator because she's the only person that ever sees it, and she's not sure she saw it. Anyway, these are all good. They're they're good shots. They're, they, it's the intimacy. It's the closeness. And w remember the animal running away that we saw its butt. Yes. That was not. That was the that opposite. That was the opposite of what we just saw. All right. City through a window with uh, halos. Uh, jet with over process. It's not too bad, though. Slip, slip and fall. Matt, I'll let you speak to this because you're an <laughs> HDR guy. So... I, I, I kind of like this, other than the halos of, of over-processing. I kind of like the view. So just put the processing on the, the, the plane. Um, it's yeah, definitely over-processed. Yeah, just process, whoa. Just process the plane. You don't have to process the snow. You don't have to do the sky. Or you can do less on the snow and less on the ground. It's just you blanketed the whole thing. But it's actually, if you look at the lighting, look at the shadow. It's well, actually taken at, a, at, a, at the right time of yeah. day. I don't know what to say about that. They don't have to say about that either. Cool clouds. Overprocessed. Instagrammy. It's a train. It's a train. Uh, Cricket know. sound. They're not bad. None of these are bad. And if that's what you're going for. <laughs> If you're going for, for a portfolio of shots that are not bad, you have attained your goal. But like Matt's sitting here looking, and I'm looking, I'm not quite sure what to say. Matt? No, this is not a bad photographer. A little over-processing, so hold back on the processing. But still, I, 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 I want to like this shot because I like, the, I like the jet. So what's it, is it angle? Is it, what's it missing? Is it the fact that there's not really snow everywhere, too? I, I mean, that's I, a problem. I think the biggest problem is it is it, the over-processing is distracting. I can't even focus on the rest. I don't know. I just don't know what to say. I hate to just give you I don't know what to say, but I don't know what to say. They're, you're not a bad photographer. This isn't a bad photographer. They don't take bad photos. They're not technically bad. I don't really, I think they're over-processing every single photo. But I don't know what to say. We'll come back to it, maybe if we can think of something to say. Okay. Only a couple more left. Brad, mm -hmm. think of something. <laughs> I don't know. To say well, about that last one. Oh. Yeah.
So there's four shots here. This looks like a snapshot. This looks like a snapshot. This looks absolutely like a cell phone snapshot. This looks good. Yeah. I was thinking the same. Like, that oh, that's like, kind of cool. That looks like I tried to make a good shot here. This looks like it's just a. I just took a, a snapshot. A nice bridge. It, let me put it this way: There's no way for me to tell if you took this with your iPhone or a DSLR. It just looks like a snapshot. So does this. It's a snapshot. You turn black and white. Half a car in the shot. Half another car crooked over here. Crooked buildings. Crooked buildings. Sky's all blown out. It's not an interesting particularly street. Nothing interesting's happening. There's no people in it. There's just someone's butt. I don't know. There's just. It, there's nothing here to make me go. Wow, that's really. Go to the next one. I can't wait to go to that city. I got to go to that city. Two guys walking away with their lunch yeah. bags. That's a, that's the definition of a snapshot. Overprocessed. And then here's a cool shot. So you're capable of making a cool shot. Yeah, the, just with the lighting and, and, and you yeah. take a building, and a, a cool looking building. It with looks lights like you on. made everything black and white and then just left that there, which is which in this case, it's selective color, which we normally hate, but it works in this yeah. building thing. Dramatic clouds. So there's some hope here. All right, we got to finish this thing up. I like. You know what makes this this? You know what I'd like to see go away? That. <laughs> good, bad, good, bad, good. Good time of day. Dead horse. Good point. time of day. DHP. DHP. This is interesting. People risking their lives for no particular reason. <laughs> Yeah, if you could, uh, if you could somehow get that tree out of there. All right, let's see what we got here. Hold on, sorry. You know, it's all right. It's a little centered, but Let me look on yours. It's blue. There you go. That helps. Vignette. Maybe a little white slider adjustment. Is there is there like sunlight on part of? Is there sunlight on part of the water and like sun, yeah. not sunlight on yeah. other parts? Yeah, there's like sunlight through here, and then that's of course up in the shadows, which is why that looks like silkier than dull. this down here. Yeah, yeah, and, and dull. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's this isn't much. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Horizon line could be in a better spot. See this down here? That didn't help. You know any. what, dude? You could just crop that. Just crop that to the. Yeah, I'm cropping. The... I'm on it. Dude, I'm on it. I'm... Crop it. Hurry. <sighs> more, more, more. Turn. Dude, aspect ratio. Change it. Pull up I the can't. bottom. Dude, no, pull no, up the no. bottom. No. I'm making it a pano then. <sighs> just pull the bottom up. I'm making it a pano. You can do it. There you go. Right there. That's good. It's a pano. If you're gonna make it a pano, freaking make it a pano. No, I man don't, up. No. Look. <laughs> then, nope. then I going like it here. Better the dark, other way. Darkness. You're you're killing this. <laughs> you're killing this. <laughs> That's a nice shot. Got some mist going on there. Good time of day. You can see the golden light on the uh, the little dock. The golden light. All right. I like it. So, and I like the one before. We kind of skipped over that one, but that one, this one, that one. You like this? Um, let me see what. Um, oh God, the water! I couldn't figure out what that was. The water's frozen <laughs> up. You know front. what? We gotta. We're either have to get better glasses, or we're gonna have to move that monitor closer. You know. You know what? Seriously, you know what would make that? We you know what would make this shot. Can we pull the shot back up? God, Which one? that one. The the one with the beach with the frozen water up front. I mean, like a. A five-second shutter speed would have made that shot. Blurrier, yeah. Would have made that shot better. But you know what? This is not pretty. Like. Yeah, because they're they're kind of man-made. This rock. is, and then you got some. They're man-made rocks back looks there. Looks like, uh, you know what this looks like? Um, Oahu. I don't know if it is some beach in Oahu. But that's not bad. Just right. the longer shutter speed would have made. Jock this says, nicer. "Didn't you guys used to hate black clouds? Yeah, I hate black clouds. Where are black clouds?" And by break, one means wrap. All right, wrap. hold on. We're going to look at the last couple. We just got a couple. Here we go. We're, we're going to wrap things up here. Hey, while we're, while we're doing these last few, it's contest time. So our gifts, our prizes today are a one-year to Kelby Training. Full one-year. Wow. So go to kelbytraining.com for all the details. But in the meantime, we're giving away 
Three books. The books. We're going to give away my iPhone book, but it's for iPhone 5. Digital print. Digital print. Brand new, just refreshed, book, digital just refreshed. Print, volume two, part two. And very cool sports book by Peter Ian Miller. Let us know which one you want. But where do you enter? Go to kelbytv.com slash contest. Then you'll pick the show, The Grid. You'll write your name in that slot. You'll write your email in that slot. You'll put your social security number there. You'll put your bank account number there as well. And then lastly, you'll put in a comment. So, um, and then we, uh, we'll choose a name and we'll... Where do we, how do we tell them the winners, Brad? They can contact you. Oh, we contact you via email. That's why you know, your email has to go in there. Okay. So uh, let us know. Go ahead and, and enter that contest now. So um, Ed Aldridge asked, do you guys do portfolio reviews? And if so, how do we go about paying for the service? We don't charge for portfolio reviews because we don't do them. <laughs> we just do them here at the grid. Every once in a while, if somebody sends me a note, I'll go look and yeah. try to help them out. But uh, Photoshop World, we actually, there is portfolio Oh, at Portfolio, reviews. At portfolio yeah. reviews, they're free. All right, let's take a couple look, look at these shots. We're going to have to roll out of here. One. Yeah, we charge 25 bucks now, right? Yeah. yeah. At Photoshop World. There's one. Two. Three. Three. Four. Ooh. Five. All right. So it's interesting. So this shot is just kind of, eh. eh. This shot is, is not bad. This shot's really good. Yeah. This shot's really nice. She's got a great smile. You've picked a great subject. I like the, the pose that she's in. Her eyes are sparkling. And this is nicely lit. Crazy white teeth. Really, really good. Um, this really isn't bad. No. It's just a little overlit. On the right it's side? Like, yeah. Well, you, you have this really bright, and this could have gone to a lot darker or a rim or something. You, in other words, he's in a mysterious pose and a mysterious kind of look. Yeah. So let me just give you an idea of what you might have could have done. You could have made it really dark, right? and then gone in here. Oh wait, I'm using the wrong thing. I would have to go in here with this. Give me just a second and really darken this. Oh. Wait, it's, it's gonna need uh, turn you have off auto on? mask, yeah. Sorry. That's what was causing the problem before on the-, on the, on the uh, Oh, on the, yeah. On the, yeah, sorry about on that. On the car. On the car. So make it really dark and then go in here and just, wait, <laughs> gonna need a bigger, bigger brush. Yeah, here. I love it how it uses a separate size brush when you do that. Uh, isn't that nice? It's a feature. And make it really kind of just mysterious on that one side. Is there a way I can make it darker? Just a little bit of light on him, I think, would have yeah. been a much more mysterious. It's just, it, but without it, it's like just way over lit. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, you'd have to light it. This is a five second retouch, but you get the idea. It's like, I don't need to see his hand real bright. But good, good shot, good, pr good, uh, good, good pose, model, good, good pose, model, good, good pose. Look. So we're giving this guy some, some love. This is a very like nice shot. I like this a lot. There's some junk over here you don't need Ooh, right here. Border Patrol. Border Patrol. That just makes the shot weaker. That makes it stronger. So nice. I like it. I, this is, a, I mean, if you want to be a little picky, this is bright for no reason. You don't want people looking over there. You don't need it that dark, though, folks. But look at that. Oh, just yeah. darken that up and then hit new and brighten this up a little. That way it draws your eye right to where you want to go. Nice shot, and though. Good silky waterfall, long exposure. You can see the... Uh, I can't get a before and after here. What's yeah, going on? It doesn't do it. Uh, you... <laughs> see how... Look what your eye was drawn here, right? Oh, freak. And now it's drawn over to the waterfall. Good shot, though. Nice long exposure. Very nicely done. And the last one wouldn't open. And this one is okay. But some good stuff there. I think it's a hey, good photographer. So I thought I thought of something. I was going to go back to that person we weren't able to. We're out of time. Well, I, I can give them. Remember the person with the caboose and the? Yeah. The, so there were, there were those two shots we didn't know what to say. There was the caboose, right? right? And then there was the train going through a town yeah. with a, a electric yeah. the structure behind it. And I guess what I would say is, is you took good photos of very, very uninteresting things. Yeah. I mean, it's a caboose in front of trees. And there, there's nothing you can do. There's no amount of photography or anything you can do to make that really good. It's, if, you're, if your hopes were to, ca to capture the caboose in the middle of trees, you did. It was a train coming through a town. 
unless you were that town that wanted to show, like, I have a postcard and say there's a train coming through the town, it, what, what you, you can't, what are you going to get from it, you know? You're not going to get a call from Train Magazine. Yeah. I need that shot. All right, let's, let's wrap these two up. So the last one is here. That's Ooh. nice. Ooh. That needs to be Ooh. just longer, but it's just, you could have chosen a better frame of firework. It's too, way too messy. Good long exposure here, but way just messy, messy. You get junk sticking up into your waterfall. Yeah. It's just messy. Just Waterfalls are tough. They have to be really clean and simple like the one we just saw. And this is, is nice, creepy kind of looking thing. Yeah, creepy. I like the little, the little the spot of light spot there. Spot of light yeah. right there. That that's, actually looks really that's cool. That's nice. Last one. Bull shot. <laughs> Sometimes the images just didn't come over and we get a JPEG. So one, two, three. I'll let you take this one. Oh, dude, I was going to let you take this one. <laughs> I like, Brad, Brad. I like the I I, I will I like I, I like the toning on those two photos, that and that that. This one's total bullshot. Come on, that was funny. Come on, bullshot. Yeah. We're not laughing. Sorry. <laughs> so that's I'm trying to take your I'm trying to take that's your compositing your, gone bad. Like your friends probably think it's the funniest thing. Oh man, yeah, I mean, that's it's your crazy house and the cat and there's stuff everywhere and You know who does really good like family composites like that? Uh Eric Doggett. Eric Doggett? Uh E R I Eric D O G G E T T. Is it Eric with a C or a K? A uh, C. So Eric does really, really funny and clever family composite. So it's like if you're looking at that family composite and you want to see another family, the guy that does family composite, he does a lot of Christmas cards and stuff, but he does them really, really well. Is that right? Uh, let's see what it comes up Nope. E-Dog, Eric, D-O-G-G, E-T-T. -T. Uh-huh. There you go. Go to like images. And All see. right, give me a second here. Don't turn it over yet. Don't turn it over. Not yet. Wait for it. Wait for it. Make sure there's actual. That's what I was going to say. Go to Google. Oh, their portfolio. His, his portfolio takes a while to. Uh, the load. Let's see if we can find one of those you're oh, talking about. Yeah, like maybe right there. This one? Yeah, it gets hard to see from that. Thumbnail. Well, now they're showing them all anyway. Okay, there we go. That's a good one. That's probably posed, but that's a cute shot. I like these kids. I like that. The baby, you know, that's composited. That baby wouldn't <laughs> jump it up in the air like that. That's a, that's a jumping baby. Jumping baby. But if you look through, he does a lot of Christmas card stuff. Um, so he does a lot of families That's like compositing. That. The old really? giraffes and oh, the... Oh, no. Dude, you, you already see the giraffe in the ocean. They're so cranky about it. <laughs> so when you go look at his Christmas card stuff, you'll see a lot of... Uh... Yeah, this guy's good. But anyway, take a look at if you're looking for like a good kind of... You got some interest. Personal was it maybe it's his personal work. No, that's cars. He's got some nice car stuff. Plane stuff. Wheel stuff. E dog. E dog. E dog e dog. Social clients? I don't know. Hello? Hi. Hi, Eric. There he is. Okay. So uh did we get through everybody? We got through everybody today. Or as many as we could possibly get to. It only took us an hour and 25 minutes Ooh, to do it. Oh, wow. God, we're way over. <laughs> yeah, hey, we uh, we're, we're going to have to go, everybody. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, sorry we went over by like a crazy amount of time. I didn't realize we were that late. I should look at the clock occasionally. <laughs>
Any uh, any uh, last words uh, there, Skleskas? Uh, no, we got to go. We got to go. They're already gone. They're, there's nobody watching anymore. All right. Well, thanks for watching, those of you who stuck into the very end. But you know what? Can I say something, Matt? You know we don't talk about enough on this show? Love. Love. We don't talk about I think next show should be all about love. Okay. Okay. The love show. Tune in next week for love. The love show. <laughs> Soon we'll be making another. Take care, everybody. Bye. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. On one software, focused on photography. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash vendors for speedlight enthusiasts. Intel, the power you need for hardcore creatives. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional photography website. And B&H Photo, the professional source.